Okay, now we're going to insert our piston into the block. So we need to put our crankshaft in. You can see we've removed the gear wheel off this side of the crankshaft. It's for the governor, so we're not using it. So crankshaft's in, it can spring freely. Uh, we want the crankshaft so that the journal is the furthest part away. And to fit the crank or the piston and rod, uh, we use our piston ring compressor. Um, there are various types in the market. Uh, this is just the one that we prefer to use. It's a lot easier. Slides over the top of the piston. Insert the piston skirt into the block. Bit of a tap to make sure it's all squared up, and then just simply push the piston into the block, and it's as easy as that. Highly recommend that tool, a lot easier than the band type piston ring compressors. So then it's a case of turning the engine on the side and guiding the bottom of the con rod. On to the crankshaft. Just put in a little bit of pressure on. And let's see if I can turn it around this way so you can see. And I'm just keeping the bottom of the con rod onto the crankshaft, pushing down the, on the piston whilst turning the crank just to get it into a good position that we can then fit the bottom the cotton rod. I'm not used to doing this upside down so bear with me. That's a better position. And our cotton rod. Bottom cap can be fitted and torqued up. I'm going to turn that around when we do that. So once you've got the uh, end cap on loosely, Use a bit of engine assembly lube and just squeeze it in and then tighten up. Two bolts to the crack specification as stated in the instructions that come with the billet con rod. That is the con rod installed into the block. And you can see you can freely turn. Okay, now we're going to fit a camshaft. This is a 274 1007 camshaft. Uh, it's been 
The lugs have been welded and reground. Uh, we've loads of different crank or camshafts on our website, all for various different power outputs and applications. Um, so there's a good range to choose from, and they're really easy to fit. Um, you'll notice on the outer wheel, there's a dot, a timing mark. I'll just make that white so it's easy to see. Draw a line. So it's easy to pick up on the camera and same again on the crankshaft there's a tiny little mark timing mark and again I'm just going to make that white and make it easy to see so you want to turn that mark so that it's roughly in the four or five o'clock position. Um, roughly in about this position. Fit your push rod lifters. Again, just a wee dab of engine assembly lube on each. While they're at it, we want to put a little dab of engine assembly lube in the end of the camshaft that will go into that. Recess. So the purpose here is to line the two dots up. So the tooth of the crankshaft gear wheel must insert in the gap between the two teeth opposite the two dots. So the two dots basically line up. In this case of just dropping in the camshaft and again making sure the two dots line up. So effectively that's the bottom end built up. Uh, take a new side case gasket, pop it on over your studs, careful not to rip it. Uh, again on our website you can change out these bearings for ceramic bearings, freer running bearings, uh, all makes a difference to performance. Uh, for this purpose uh, we're just sticking with the standard ones. Um, again a little bit of engine assembly lube. Just to free things up a bit. Make it slide on nice and easily. And again, a dab on the end of the camshaft. And then just Tap on the side case cover. Uh, again, on the website we do lovely billet covers. Um, again, for this purpose we're just sticking with a standard engine. And then in this case it's just putting on the washers from your stud kit. And six nuts. And then going around each one and torquing to the correct torque. So all that's left now is to put on the flywheel. So we need to turn the crankshaft just so that the keyway is facing the 12 o'clock position. Again, ignition coil this side, front of the engine. You want the gap, the cutout of the keyway to be on the ignition coil side. Now we can either fit standard flywheel um, 
We also do a range of the arc billet flywheels, uh, but today we're just going to fit the on the aluminium flywheel. So it's about a kilo lighter. Uh, you can see that the fan is already integrated with it, and the magnets, trigger magnets, are flush with the flywheel as opposed to sticking out like this on the original flywheel. Uh, these are slightly advanced as well, so we fit a 4 degree keyway here. Uh, and this case off, slotting the flywheel on, holding the crank, turning the flywheel so that it butts up against the keyway. So that effectively the key, turning the, key, the flywheel clockwise so that it butts up against the keyway, advancing it. Then, Take your starter cup, you can see on the alley flywheel there's a tiny little dimple and on the starter cup there is a raised nipple that recesses into that. Uh, if you're fitting one of our starter motor nuts it's just a case of putting the starter motor nut directly onto that but as we're going to be fitting the pull start we need to fit starter cup and the large nut. Just do that up. And tight. Okay, once you've got the nut on finger tight, it's just a case of torquing to the correct torque setting. And that flywheel fitted, piston moving nicely up and down the block, uh, we can then fit our cylinder head 